And now, your host, Couch Tomato! Hey, I'm Couch Tomato and I'm joined by... Hulk. Welcome to Stuff for Movie Buffs. And today we're talking... The top five worst movies of 2017. We'll try to play nice. Mm -hmm. So um, before we get into these top five worst movies of the year, there's an asterisk on my list. And I I would imagine there's some asterisks. uh, I have a hard time saying that word, so forgive me. (laughs) There's uh, an asterisk on uh, your list as well. So feel free to explain your criteria on how you came up with your list. I'll go first. Okay. So um, I've only included movies that I've watched at home or theaters. Um, not going by reviews, ratings, or um, me just being sick and tired of franchises. These are movies that I actually saw with my own eyes. Uh, keep in mind, with that being said, I didn't see any uh, Shades of Grey movies. Uh, didn't see All Eyes on Me. Didn't watch Mummy. Didn't watch Assassin's Creed. Um, this year, I shared with you guys at the beginning of the year, uh, my New Year's resolution was not to support movies blindly. So if I didn't really feel impacted by the trailer... I wasn't going to spend my hard-earned money at the uh, box office for it. So there's a lot of movies that I avoided. So this is my so my top five worst movies of 2017. You could easily change that title to top five worst movies that I've personally seen. Mm. All right. So um, what about you? What's your criteria like? My criteria is just like, this is the top five worst movies that I couldn't even finish because they were so bad. <laughs> like that's it's, it's similar. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like I just know certain, certain things are, are not on my list that people are going to be like, what, why didn't you put that on your list? You must love it. Yeah. I just want to make you be transparent that, Hey, I didn't watch everything that hit theaters this year. There was a lot of things that I avoided, you know, so I feel like I know better, but um, <laughs> all right, let's jump right into it. I guess we'll just go back to back list right. your five. I list my five. And then we do that with four uh, through one. So uh, to start it off, number five, a surprising entry on my list. I'm actually going to put Beauty and the Beast, the live action. uh, I guess you could call it a remake. Yeah, Yeah. live action remake um, from Disney. So I got that as my number five. And um, I guess we'll we'll talk about it and then we'll jump into yours. So uh, have you seen this movie, Hope? Barely. Like I watched like half of it, but I'm surprised you have it on your list like i didn't think it was that bad it it, 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 the movie on paper isn't that bad but let me tell you reasons why i hate it like i hate it with a passion so i picked this movie because number one it is the easiest to make so there's not really a lot of effort there because it's just yeah almost a plot for plot remake of the animated uh thing but that's as little to no weight on why it's on this list so so my biggest issue is the voices and i'm a huge harry potter fan um but hermione she was auto-tuned for the whole movie. And that kind of pissed me off because mm-hmm. when you think of Beauty and the Beast, if you can't sing, you don't need to be cast in that role. Like Beauty and the Beast arguably has one of the best soundtracks and scores um, compared to any other Disney animated movie or any other Disney movie. And during that era, you had Aladdin's, you had Little Mermaids, you had Lion King. So that's when they were like hitting hard. Yeah. So it looks like Beauty and the Beast they cast it based off of uh you know popularity and appearance not necessarily voices because the voices in this movie it just felt like okay we're gonna hire you based you know just because you were in the lord of rings movie you were in the x-men movie you were in the harry potter franchise you're in the pirates of the caribbean franchise so we're just gonna focus on box office and it will just train you out of sync you know so i i I don't know i i think i heard something to where she had to take voice, you know, lessons after she was cast. But I'm I'm thinking in my head, like, why wouldn't you just why why didn't you include knows how to sing on your you know checklist when you were looking for a, um, actors in the first place? So to me, I'm like, it just felt like the auto tune version of Beauty and the Beast. So that's why I hated the movie. And that's why it's on my top five. OK, I, 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 I could get, dig that a little bit, but I don't know. I still think it was it had redeeming aspects to it coming from somebody who says they barely remember it but um that's fine moving along no. <laughs> this, this came out what february uh, january it, Come on, I, I would imagine there's going to be some movies on this uh, on your top five list of the best movies that came out in february january i mean february march earlier in the year too so um let's waste no time and let's get into your number five so i couldn't pick that the mummy mummy i didn't see it and i kind of knew from the trailer that this wasn't <laughs> going to be good yeah it was 
it was mostly like disappointing. They just did a lot of head scratching things. Like the villain wasn't um, as compelling. Um, uh, the way they did, uh, I guess Tom Cruise just wasn't really right for the role in a way. Like he just seemed out of place. Like you know what I'm saying? Because Cruise is a certain guy. Like don't get me wrong, he's a talented dude, but at the same time, he gets into that mode where it's just like he's Tom Cruise. He's not necessarily. Yeah, you- He's bigger than the, uh, the, you know, the roles that he plays. Exactly. So it's yeah. just like throughout the movie, you're just watching him and just like, oh, man, why is Tom Cruise in the desert? Why is he getting trapped? Why is he fighting Russell Crowe? It's just like he just takes Except you out of Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke is like really doing Mission Impossible now and fighting mummies. It just looks <laughs> weird. I get it. And then let me ask you this. Are they still planning to go forward with this franchise that they I, I heard that was so obvious that they were setting up? I think so. I mean, they're still I think they're still planning um, the Dracula movie and all that stuff. But at the same time, as far as the mummy, that's not getting a sequel. I'll be shocked if Universal, you know, continues to push that out there. But I think as far as like their overall universe, I think they're going to push out, you know, some of their other stuff. But I don't know if it's going to be as cohes- cohesive as they wanted it to be. So. They're doing it like the kind of Godzilla. It's like you don't need to focus on the same character, but it's mainly the property as a whole. It's like the, the same universe. It's a shared universe, but they don't have to mingle with each other. So I, I get that. I'm I'm probably never going to see that movie. Like cert, certain movies I only watch because I have to do a 24 Reasons review on yeah. it. It's a lot of movies in this year, this year that I'm just like, you know what? I'm not doing a review on that. I, I kind of don't care. How much request that I get on this particular movie, I'm just I just can't sit through it because I had to sit through some bad movies and I consider it punishment when fans do that to me, to me sometimes. So uh, I'm just joking, but let's uh, move on to number four. So uh, I'll let you go first with your number four. Number four, I have the emoji movie. Uh, we'll see if this makes an appearance on my list as well. But I was late to the party and I saw this movie for a 24 Reasons review. So uh uh-huh. yeah, I- explain why this is on your list. It's just a dead movie, and it's just like, and it's so weird for an animated movie to have that connotation next to it. So it's just like I'm watching it, and I'm like, okay, like when is this movie gonna start? Like, what's what's it about? And it's just like, and I think with this one, they're a little too self-aware. One thing that the Lego Movie did well was just like everybody. In, the same thing with other um, animated movies. It's just like we know that you're animated, but at the same time. They're not necessarily self-aware. The Emoji Movie was just a little too self-aware. It was just like constantly. It was just like, okay, I'm the crap emoji or I'm the smiley face. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, there was just a little. It was a movie full of puns. Yeah, and yeah. Pun, puns are only funny for like two exactly. minutes. Exactly. If you have a, if you have a two-hour movie, uh, it gets it gets old fast. And they once again, you mentioned it earlier. They put too much stuff in it. They were at the end of the movie and they were still introducing characters and plot points. And I'm like, what? It's like, we're almost done. And you're introducing this firewall thing? We're we're almost done. And you're introducing another character. Like, wow. Like, the thing I like about Wreck-It Ralph, everything you needed to know was in that first 15 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. There's stuff that they, little stuff that they add at the end, but it's like, you understand the rules. Hey, you can't be in a game when it's unplugged or something, or you can't get to the central hub. You can't uh, die in another person's game or else you, you can't be regenerated. So they explained all of those rules within that first 10 minutes. In this movie, they kept explaining new rules. And I'm like, oh, this is whack. And then um, the jokes in this movie aren't for kids, right? But the the weird thing is they're not for adults either. <laughs> I have a hard time understanding who's this tar- target demographic. Like the there's a there's a I've got to be meh. Uh, uh, you know, kind of number at the beginning. And my daughter's too young to understand um, your Sammy Davis Jr. impression, sir. But the thing is, 90% of the people with iPhones won't understand that reference. And I was just like, this isn't funny. They just got a a whole bunch of lames to write the script and it was not funny. And it's very difficult for animated movies to be very bad. Like even when animated movies are bad, there's still an audience for it that loves it. With this, like when my daughter hates a movie and she's at that age, I'm talking about my youngest daughter, Mm -hmm. you know, because my oldest daughter is a little picky, but my youngest daughter, she's three years old. She's at that age. She'll basically eat up what the programmer shoot out to her. And when she doesn't like this movie, it's an issue. So uh, I'm not surprised you put that on your list. So that's your number four. My number four. Luckily, I didn't have to ask for my money back because uh, 
I saw it on Netflix, and it's uh, bright. It's a, a recent, you know, addition to the Netflix queue, and got this as, as my number four. Hulk, have you seen the movie? I'm currently watching it. I'm it's like... You got to break it up in increments. <laughs> no, it's like, okay, I'm actually liking it so far. I'm trying to... Uh, but that that's the thing, Hulk, and I told you on the phone, because I told you as soon as I saw it, I text Hulk, guys, and I was like, have you seen Bright? Mm -hmm. question mark he says not yet I, and i just put like a throw up emoji face or something like that and i said but let me put an asterisk if you like suicide squad you're going to love this and if you hated suicide squad you'll hate this movie keep in mind hulk loved suicide squad when he first saw it he hated it after i'm pretty sure he's gonna have the same effect with bright he's gonna <laughs> love it with his first viewing he's gonna try to watch it a second time and he's going to throw up I think this movie is whack. I think David Ayer is a one-trick pony. The film had every plot point from every successful franchise from the year 2002 <laughs> up to now. And it was a mess. Like I just didn't understand why these themes made it into this picture. Like, who asked for a buddy cop, Lord of the Wings, Harry Potter type franchise? I don't know why they thought that would be a good idea. And another person that was behind this is Max Landis, and he needs to stop. Like, the only Landis that I mess with is Landis that uh, made uh, Thriller and Coming to America. I thought Chronicle was okay, but it was more about the performance of the villain than anything. It wasn't really that creative from a script standpoint. So ever since then, Landis has really been feeling himself, and um, he's been pumping out trash, and this is some more of that. So I hated this movie. Uh, there's it's, Ironically, there's nothing bright about it, and yeah, and even the orcs, they couldn't make up their mind if they wanted to be black or Jewish. I'm like, the script is nah, all over the, the place. Like, that's what I was liking it so far. Cause it was just like, that's an, oh, that's another reason why I'm surprised you don't like it. You don't like the, the meta, how it is just like, they're using. Tell me what's meta about Okay, it. it's just like, okay. They had like the, with the sword. Remember with the guy with the sword in the beginning? Yeah. And it was just like, they were patient with him. They didn't kill him, they didn't shoot him, whatever. And then you have, the scene prior to that, they had, like, the orcs just getting beat up by these cops. Like, just almost, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just bludgeoned to death, almost. You don't see how, like, how that's a social dynamic of what we're going through today. Like, how they're patient with, like, you know, I don't want to get too, yeah, you but know, it would, it would, with it politics. Would. But they're patient with, you know, someone who's not in a minority. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. And then the unarmed, you know, black kid gets shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just. It was so, it was so. So in your face though that it wasn't even cool. Like uh, the thing is, the thing is, you could relate this movie to Zootopia, but in Zootopia, it was like they kind of like flipped the that whole uh, idea on 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 the bottom of his head. Because remember, Judy Hobbs became a cop because the thing about Zootopia was everybody lives in harmony, and she gets there and it's like, oh, it's not true. Mm -hmm. But the only person that was really facing prejudice was the fox, just the fox. So you couldn't really see it. And then all of a the sudden they needed uh, they used the medicine angle because they I think Disney realized it's not believable and it comes off too preachy when they act that way or you know racist naturally because even in today's society we try to mask racism and this movie they weren't doing it they were like they were just outright racist and you know like the big thing about um, the whole Black Lives Matter movement is a lot of people that are against it won't say it out loud. They find different ways to poke holes into it. Mm -hmm. So with this movie, no, they were just, we hate orcs. We just, it just doesn't seem believable. They had to use an excuse on Zootopia, which was the, uh, the, uh, the herb, whatever that was that they, they had to take that med that mm -hmm. medicine where they were like, Oh no, because they're not thinking logically. It's like, they're basically under the influence. So I'm like, in this movie, it was just like, ah, oh, this is lame. I get it. They're beating up an orc, <sighs> but I don't know. whatever. <laughs> That's <laughs> if you. I'm telling. You, I'm gonna talk to you in three months, Hope, and I know you're gonna hate this movie. And boy, if this is on your top five list, I, I don't think we're friends anymore. <laughs> but don't spoil it for me. Just let me find out in the surprising <laughs> method. Let's move on to number. I think we're at number three now. Yeah. So what do you got at number three? Transformers. Last night. All right. Why do you hate this movie so much? Uh, it's like it's shocking to me because Transformers. Don't get me Nothing wrong. Shocking about that movie, in my opinion. No That's the reason I hated it. <laughs> nah, it's just like Transformers is one of those franchises where 
even if the movie is necessarily bad or just like it misses plot points, it's like it's not necessarily like a full cohesive movie. You're still at the end of the day entertained just by nah, nah not after <laughs> Age of Extinction. Okay, okay, no. after okay, the, at least the first three. And the, the first, first, the second one, the second one is actually to me, Revenge is <laughs> before Age of Extinction. Revenge was like the worst, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So you you take out the okay. um, second one, one and three, you could get you could get through it. Yeah, you could get through it. It's I think one is the best. And in three, I didn't really have a problem with. Yeah, Age of Extinction was horrible. And this movie, since the like since this movie came out, mm -hmm. you now officially, I think, if you poll the fans of Transformers, because there is a community out there that likes it, yep, you, they now have more bad Transformers movies than quote unquote good Transformers movies. And that to me, that's just a red flag. Like, hey, it's time. or excuse me, a white flag. Like, surrender. Like, give it up. Yeah, it's time. Wait. Yeah, wait, wait, wait for 35, 40 years, 60 years to reboot this thing. Like, wait, wait, for, hopefully wait for me to be off the face of the earth. But, um, yeah, if you need to do it sooner, just give this, give this film a five year break and reboot. Yeah. And what's scary is just like they want to come out with spinoffs with like a Bumblebee movie like this. Why? Because he could talk <laughs> and he could. People are already worried about those guys not getting enough screen time and uh, screen. Uh, not getting enough screen time and you're going to devote a whole movie to the one that can't talk Hasbro is tripping. And you know, when you look at the box offer, uh, when you look at the box office numbers, this movie, I didn't watch this movie till like recently. Yeah. Right. And I fell asleep. There's a whole chunk in the middle that I missed, but, um, I'm just hoping nothing was, you know, important. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm imagining there's not, but, uh, when I saw the low box office numbers, I'm like, well, that that's expected because I think the same thing happened with, for some reason, I think the same thing happened with Justice League to where it's like, I think a lot of people who didn't want to see Justice League had a bad taste in their mouth from uh, Suicide Squad. And even though Wonder Woman cheated because a lot of people supported that movie mainly because of what it meant for the culture. It's a female lead. Let's go out and support. And the movie ended up being good. Great. But I think yeah, some of Justice League, it was outside stuff preventing it from hitting, you know, 100 million. And it was really close to doing that. I thought that that's the same thing that happened with Transformers. Like, OK, the movie isn't as bad as they're making it out to seem. It's just like another Age of Extinction. I don't like it, but an audience will like it. And I'm like, they, it's just not doing as good because Age of Extinction sucked really bad. You know, like, uh, so a lot of people aren't supporting it. When I saw it, I'm like, oh, no, this movie... This movie's really bad. Like, it's actually worse than Age of Extinction. How could you do that? So, yeah. And, and then another thing. This movie, what's the what's the title of this movie? The Last Night. The franchise is Transformers. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Help me out here. So, Transformers. <laughs> it's so ironic because the script is a Transformer in itself. Like, the same way that you see, like, a car turn into something that it's completely not and become a robot, an alien robot... That's what this script does. Like, it, it, I kid you not. If you haven't seen this movie, do yourself a favor and not see this movie. <laughs> but it starts off in medieval times, and then it, um, we're in present day, and the world is in this dystopian future because uh, because of Transformers Three, which, by the way, wasn't really the case in Transformers Four. Okay, exactly. parts of Chicago were disrupted, but it wasn't a whole world phenomenon type thing. Exactly, and then. The government doesn't trust Autobots because they let the Decepticons uh, destroy Earth. But the government, for some reason, believes it's a great idea to partner up with Megatron. This script is a Decepticon. It's like the worst idea that I've ever heard of or seen unfold on camera. Universal has to cut the cord and reboot. Like, this film is long, just like all the other Transformers films, to be fair. But why is it that long? I don't know why they keep doing that. In yeah, a, in a, especially. Oh, go ahead. No, especially when you're trying to just be a summer blockbuster, and like, and it's like when you're not really trying to, you don't really have like a message or anything like that to get across. You just want people to go in and have fun. You don't need to, to be like nearly three hours long. And I'm not calling almost. anybody out because I could easily say a name of a person that I think did this, but there's somebody who is in charge of this casting and in charge of the editing and in charge of the whatever ended up on screen. There was some decision maker that thought it would be a good idea to basically put that, 
young teenage girl, probably like 13, preteen or whatever, like 13, 14, mm -hmm. and use her as a sex symbol. Like there's some uncomfortable parts in this movie where they, you could tell that the producer... You see it in the trailer. I'm like... Bro, it's... they were trying to make her like a Megan Fox. And I'm like, hey man, that's actually pretty disgusting. Like you could obviously tell that this girl's in middle school. And this is... Or even elementary. I'm just like <laughs> this... like. And all the sexual harassment stuff going on in Hollywood today, I'm, yeah, like, I don't want to call anybody out because it would be wrong for me to accuse somebody who had nothing to do with that uh, uh, situ decision. But I'm like, what are they doing? Like, why did they think that would be a great idea? But no, nah, I definitely agree with you. That is one of the worst, worst movies of the year. Um, and who knows? It might end up on my list. We'll see. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So we're on number threes, right? Uh two or oh, well, for your three right yeah i'm on my number three ghost in the shell i won't spend too much time on this movie because i barely spend enough time awake but um <laughs> i saw this movie i don't remember anything about this movie that's the thing like i'm like i saw this movie i know i was awake more than i was asleep but um it, it, and the thing is i'm really confused on why i saw this movie like no one held the gun to my head and i've been great this year at looking at the trailer and realizing, okay, this is going to be a bad movie. And for some reason, I wanted to see this movie. I wasn't forced to see it. You know, I, I, just, I signed some type of disclosure agreement that I went on my own will. And I don't, I barely remember anything. The only parts I remember are parts that were like ripped out of the uh, animated uh, movie. Mm -hmm. To where I'm like, I remember Scarlett Johansson, you know, uh, ripping the machine. And then, you know, her uh, wires and stuff getting pulled out just like on the thing. But... I just remember leaving the theater and I was thinking to myself, this film isn't going to make any money. And I hope Scarlett Johansson starts um, asking for a Black Widow standalone because after this failure, I don't know if she's going to be the leading actress um, in a film for a while um, yeah. after this fiasco. So that to me, that was one of the worst movies that I saw this year. Yeah, I think it, it hurt her trajectory of her career as far as leading a blockbuster you know what i'm saying like she, she's still gonna get roles because she still has talent but at the yeah. same time as far as her them putting a franchise on her i don't i'll be shocked and it ain't even her fault because it's like uh it wasn't really it's you could tell like the movie was just a bad idea like some stuff that looks great animated yeah doesn't look good when you put it in live action especially when you start mixing races around so people pe the the fan base for this already got ticked off for, for that yeah so yeah um next up I got emoji Muji. Uh, no, no, no. I got emoji movie, and we already talked about my feelings on that. So I got that uh, ranked a little lower than you. So you loved it a little bit more than me, but mm -hmm. no, um, you know, judge free zone. Uh, so moving <laughs> on to your number two, uh, the Great Wall with uh, Matt Damon. Didn't see it. Don't know why you saw it, but um, I, it was like by mistake. I, tell me was, what I missed. <laughs> and I was visiting my house, and they had it on, and it was just like just a bad movie. Like I just hate like the premise. Like it seemed like they were trying to um copy uh what's that tom cruise oh the last samurai it just seemed like they were trying to copy that trope and then yeah, they were trying to piss off of the entire country yeah which um, and like the cgi wasn't even that good it was just like i didn't get like why they why there was just so many dragons or all these weird creatures like it just like to me the movie just didn't seem like something that should have been made or if you're gonna make a movie like that at least not necessarily take it more serious but just use more common sense and like how you film it or how you um you know technically you know use these characters and use matt damon because i think he's a talented actor but i just feel like this was like a wrong script like i don't know if he chose it or his team chose it like i just felt like he should have never did this movie like it didn't work at all i don't know but it's not it's not it's not shaping up to be a good year for him because yeah he had another for 2017 he got the great wall mm -hmm. then he he was the narrator in um, Boston, and he was uh, he produced another movie, uh, Ben in the Ark. But and uh, you have uh, Serbacon, Sir, yeah, which I'm hearing is like really, really bad. Like, and you have downsizing, which is uh, on the site that should not be named. That's not doing good. Yeah, either. like I don't know what he's doing. Like he has to, you know, what I'm saying he's such a talented actor. He's one of my favorites. Smoking weed. <laughs> or something. He has to get back to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> get back to doing like you know, like The Martian, or you know, what I'm saying like do what you doing. like. I just. Be careful what you ask yeah, for. Eight, you, eight <laughs> sequels of that. No, how about yeah. you just do better movies? Like pick better movies or something. Because I don't see why he read that script for um, 
the Great Wall and thought it was yeah. going to be a good idea. I just don't see how do you not know you're going to piss off people when you when when it's like yeah. a whitewashed idea. It's like, hey man, this doesn't seem like a good idea. But Hulk's trying to blame it on his cousin. The reason he saw that movie, <laughs> whatever. All right. Um. So um, my number. What well, we're on number one, right? One. Yep. My number one. I got Transformers. That's my most hated movie of the year. I talked mm-hmm. about it already. Obviously, another situation where you love that movie more than I do. I hate it. But uh, mm-hmm. Judge Free Zone again. Uh, it was the worst movie of the year. I think it's the longest movie of the year. I think it's the worst movie of the year. I think it's a clear indication that there shouldn't be more of these movies because of that. So it's my number one worst movie that I saw in 2017. What's yours? All right. This is another situation where I didn't voluntarily watch this. I was over at uh, someone else's house and then they had this on uh, Fifty Shades Darker. This is the worst. This is probably like the worst movie I've ever seen. What a coincidence! My, like the it, worst movie I've ever seen is the, the first one. Yeah, like it's, it took me. You how long? Wait, how? Just off the top of your head, if you had to give an estimate, how long do you think the first one is? Maybe an hour and a half. Maybe I think it rolls into two. Oosh. I maybe, but that's not even that bad. Ask me how long it took me to watch it. <laughs> um. Maybe four hours, like pausing it. It it was 12 hours. I took breaks like every 15 minutes because my brain was begging like, hey, (laughs) I need a break. I need a break. And by the way, I I compared it to Twilight. So that whole video is the longest video I've ever done to this date. Not time time wise. Putting in the work. You know, run time. But yeah, putting in the work, writing the script. And I'm like, oh my God, there's probably a lot of mistakes in that video that I just didn't want to go back and check because I'm like, uh uh-uh, I'm not finding that scene. I'm not having to sit through this dialogue. Like, So I knew to stay away from these movies, but for some reason, you, your your arm was twisted and you ended up watching the movie. And what did you see nah, when you watched it? It's like these, the these actors are just so awkward. And it's like, I don't know if it's necessarily the script or like their talent. It's just there's zero chemistry on a movie where it's based on 100% chemistry. Like the two characters, the two leads have to have chemistry. They have to have that tension. And it's like, there's nothing there. Like I feel bad for them throughout the whole movie. The dialogue is just brutal. I feel bad for you. <laughs> like, you just had to sit through the, it. The dialogue is just so brutal. It's like so generic, so like flat and dead. Like it's like you're, it's like you're watching it and it's just like, a director actually saw this and was just like, okay, this scene is good. An editor actually, clipped it together and was just like okay i did a good I do job know, i do know one of the things with that is that uh the the creator or the the writer yeah has a lot of say so on what goes on the big screen but the thing is i hear the books are just as bad so i'm like nah you can't really it's yeah. everybody's at fault for this garbage I, i'm i'm probably i know if i could say like without a shadow of a doubt that i will never watch another 50 type shades of gray type <laughs> film ever in life ever again like I, i'll never be at someone's <laughs> house i'll always leave i'll never it, you'll never find me having an excuse on why i seen that movie but rest assured if i did it would end up as my most hated every single year so we're gonna do something fun there's probably a movie that i want you to just pick one a movie that probably got hate that some people are gonna be like hey i know you saw this movie couch why isn't it on your countdown for top five words i want you to defend a movie that probably got too much hate that people misunderstood. So uh, pick one. You can name a couple if you want to. I only got one in mind that I feel like okay, it doesn't really deserve the hate. Um, so uh, let's let's uh, you know t- take turns kind of defending movies that we saw in 2017 that some people may think are the worst, but they're really not that bad. Okay. Um, okay. For me, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Bright. Like the more and more I'm watching it, I, like I really I. That's just kind of disrespectful yeah. to me. <laughs> I, I, I just don't think it deserves that much hate. Like, because to me, okay, if on a side. Hey, keep in mind, I hate it on. I, I hate the movie, but I also said if you like Suicide That's true. Squad, true. you're going to you love do. this. So I just know, I know certain movies are. And, and to me, Bright seems very it polarizing is. to where I feel like the same amount of people who love it hate it. I don't, I don't think there's an overwhelming amount of people who hate it like I, I there's certain movies that came out this year where it's obvious like more people hated that movie than loved it i could i, I could I, I wouldn't be surprised if certain credible people put bright in their top five best movies of the year so i'm not even um 
hating on you. Well, you don't have it on this list. So, but if you do have it on your top five, though, we're just not cool. Chill, chill, you're doing the same chill. thing you did with Suicide Squad. I'm like, hold, you're chill, not going to like this movie. Chill, this, you're not going to like this movie chill. in three months. <laughs> uh, so you got spoiled taste in movies, but it's whatever. For me, I'm putting Power Rangers. Oh, that's a good I one. That, that's a good I do, one. I feel like more people hated that movie than people actually liked it. For me, like when I like when I watch my son watch it or like young kids, I'm like, all right, well, that's the same way the reaction I had when I used to watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So that's their target audience. And by the way, I think a lot of people who did hate the movie, they're compa- comparing it to like comic book type movies and stuff. I'm like, no, that's not what you're getting. Not from Lionsgate. This is Lionsgate is like the league leader when it comes to like young adult movies. Like when they're they're behind. Uh, arguably the best young adult uh, franchise, which is The Hunger Games, even though Harry Potter blows them out the water, in my opinion. But yeah, so that's the type of movie this is. is it isn't a comic book movie. It's like a young adult action movie. And I feel like if you go in with those expectations, you're like, okay, you know what? This actually could be a successful franchise. They're just not going to be a billion dollar brand like Marvel, etc. cetera. So um, when you think about the climate, like what's out right now when it comes to young adult movies, you got Maze Runner coming out in January. So, you know, that's going to be whack. There's really no type of audience to feed the hunger for those people who um, who used to love the Hunger Games movies, because that stuff ended like two years ago. And there really hasn't been a successful young adult franchise since. So um, I think you need to lump this in with like Ninja Turtles, Maze Runner type films. And I think if you do that, you'll understand, OK, this this de- I don't think it deserves to be on people's worst lists because I, th- I think it's been popping up. So uh, that's that. All right, cool. So I'm anxious to hear from you guys. What were your the top five worst movies that you've seen? Um, or you agree or disagree with us? You think Bright is the best movie ever made, like Hulk? Or you're on my side to where you think it sucks? Um, so let us know. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section or head over to Facebook to share your opinion, guys. So it's about that time. I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, Before you leave, if you like what you heard, share it with a friend on Apple Podcasts or wherever you go for your podcast. Don't let this be the last time we hear from you or you hear from us. Uh, Support the show and become a sponsor by visiting our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Couch Tomato Films. Also, join us next week and check out the show notes on where to find us weekly. It's Couch Tomato Films on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram and Couch Tomato Film on Twitter. Other than that, peace. Peace.